if this project gets built, it will be literally the biggest renewable energy project in Australia. Um, and it certainly will be up there with some some of the ones, you know, internationally as well. Um, but the, the thing that makes this project really ambitious is not necessarily the size, but the idea of making Australia into an electricity exporter, which is just not something that we do at the moment. We're an island and all the electricity that's made here stays here. So that's really the thing that makes this project very different, I think, to some of the other large renewable projects, both here and overseas. OK, so what do you think of the fact that Mike Kennan brooks has claimed control of the project today? Yeah, I mean, look, it's... Uh, I think the thing about this project is it does because of its size and its ambition and because it is trying to do something that we've never done in this country before, it didn't really matter who ended up owning it. It's still going to face some really significant challenges to get built. Um, so as part of the announcement today, uh, I think I believe uh, Grok Ventures said that they will continue to pursue um, what are called off takers. So people who are willing to buy the electricity without someone who is prepared to buy the electricity that's put out by this project it will not ever go ahead um that is a, it's a really that's kind of the the number one thing that any renewable energy project needs is an off taker is someone who's prepared to buy the electricity because without that you can't raise capital and singapore isn't a guaranteed customer at this stage no, they're not. I mean, I think there's been, you know, um, heads of agreement and, and that sort of thing about to enter into potentially talking about it, but no one has actually signed on the line yet, as far as I'm aware, to say, yes, we will take this much amount of electricity at this price. And so taking that into account, what do you think are the prospects of the, this actually getting up? It's really anyone's guess, Joe. I don't, I don't like to, to bet on, on these sorts of things, but, um, you know, it's certainly hugely ambitious. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that there is a staged approach being taken. You know, I think they're building um, one point, I don't, I'm not exactly sure this yeah. time, I think it's 1.8 gigawatts um, first, which is kind of comparable to sort of large-ish solar projects, um, and running a cable to Darwin. Um, but then after that, you know, you sort of needs to get across, you know, across the Torres, well, kind of across the Torres Strait, round Singapore, and then out to, um, round Indonesia, sorry, and then out to Singapore. Um, and, you know, it's that part of it that's really the really big next step. If that, if you can't get the off taker in Singapore, then what this will be is a large solar farm in Central Australia, potentially selling its electricity into Darwin. Right. Now, if this project gets up, do you know what the plan is in terms of the percentage of the energy generated from this going to Singapore? Um, I'm actually not sure, Joe. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. right. I mean, certainly Singapore is going to have much larger demand than what Darwin does. So I would expect that a fair amount of it would be um, going over there. The other thing is that when it goes to Singapore, it also really feeds into the quite nascent ASEAN power grid. So Singapore is connected to Malaysia and to Vietnam as well. Um, so it's kind of feeding into a larger grid once it gets there. And what do you think of the fact that this would be going ahead when Australia has still got a fair way to go in terms of re reaching its own renewable air energy targets? So, I mean, to the lay person, they might just be thinking, geez, well, yeah, we've, we've got a lot to do here in Australia in terms of reaching those targets. So why isn't all the energy from a project like this, the biggest project in Australia, if it gets up, going towards um, Australia meeting its targets? Yeah, that, I mean, that's certainly a very good question. The, the thing is that, you know, governments don't really have control over who buys the electricity in the end. So if someone in Singapore is prepared to pay more for this electricity than someone in Australia, and that's enough to underwrite sending a cable over to Singapore, then that is what is going to happen. There are some people who suggest that this project should be sending the energy south. Um, the thing that we're really grappling with in the Australian energy market, though, is it's partly about new generation coming into the system, but it's also about what's called firming and storage. So how do we make sure that we've got 24 hour power? Um, and this project isn't going to do anything um, to solve that in the southern states. It was at one point talking about potentially doing a very large battery in Darwin, which would help, you know, balance out the fact that, you know, its, it's generation is during the day when the sun is up, um, but Darwin needs power all night. And it would also 
you know, part of the reason that Singapore is attractive was Singapore is three hours ahead of Australia. So you kind of, you know, at the time that we're generating is different to the time uh, that, right. um, you know, that you get generation in Singapore. So it allowed us to sort of take advantage of that. But, you know, that's only three hours different. So that's not huge. Yeah, and just finally, because of the so because of the nature of this project, it it, it couldn't really find customers in Australia for its electricity. Look, I think there's. I mean, I think in some ways that is potentially why Andrew Forrest was interested in this project was that he's also, through some of his you know iron ore and hydrogen ventures, a potential customer for the electricity. The thing is about the sort of the transformation of how we use energy in this country is we are having to build new supply and find new demand sources at the same time. And that sort of creates a little bit of chicken and egg problem sometimes. So, you know, you can't build your renewables without someone who wants to take the electricity, but someone who wants electricity is waiting to see that the renewables will be there before they sign up. So, um, you know, potentially they could have found markets for it, but it would have um, maybe have meant that we needed to find new demand sources rather than demand sources we have now.